Okay. Hi. <laughs> so, I'm just saying, like, so a lunch and learn, it's like opening the blinds of a dark room. What did you say? Yeah, I said, I said a lunch and learn on figuring out your values, your employees' values, and how they match up or don't, how they align or don't to your company's values. Because I, I don't know if people realize this, but that would be the first place I'd look if I was looking for a job. I'd look and see if the company has a values page. And so many do, you'll be surprised. They all do. I wanna make sure I can hear you better. It's hot in yeah. Chicago. We're in Chicago. Yeah. I'm Sonia Davis, and this is Melissa G. Wilson, my yeah. girlfriend, my publisher, my fun person to have conversations with. I love it. <laughs> it's like hot in Cleveland. Did you say it's hot in Chicago? I love that. It's too. hot in Chicago. It is a summertime yeah. shy here in the city of Chicago. Yeah, that air conditioner is going. So let me yeah. turn it off. That's right. <laughs> and and hat tip to Betty White from Oak Park. Yay. That's it. God bless her soul. Yes. God bless her soul. So we started this conversation, or at least on LinkedIn and here in the world for everybody to see how we just do it ourselves. And however, what we address and what we're talking about mm -hmm. can actually be of benefit to you in your life. So I would encourage anybody who's listening or watching, watching, anybody who's listening or watching to Put something in the chat. Let us know that you're here. Um, but more importantly, engage with us and feel free to ask us questions or make yeah. a statement. Yes. And if if you're on YouTube, subscribe, hit the subscribe button, make comments. And for whatever reason, what it reminds me of today yeah. is one one time, you know, I've been around for a couple decades. So one time <laughs> there was this great woman who came to me and she said, I want to do a lunch with you, kind of like an Oprah thing, you know, in the city, in the great city of Chicago, we got to do that. And what my question was, with a little dog sitting at a table, table, would you like a seat at the table? But people had to write a whole page why they wanted a seat at the table and to have a conversation around values, which we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. And there were 10 people that had wonderful reasons why they wanted to be with others, because right now there's even more of an awareness. We need each other. We really need to connect. And, and it's a it's a very powerful thing. So the lunch was a catch 35. It was fantastic. And it's it's a memory. And uh, but something that I thought right before we started, I thought Saudi and I have to have that like next spring. Yeah. So, so people can keep thinking about that. And, you know, if if in as we go along, you want to be part of that, just, you know, let us know. And it will be a lot of fun to see who is going to be a part of it. And then you get to meet all kinds of wonderful people, which is what I've spent my career doing, bringing wonderful people together. Exactly. And the other thing that can come from that, right, yeah. as we talk about prosperity through publishing, yeah. is when individuals end up engaging with us, they end up telling us, much like a doctor says they're a doctor in the room and somebody goes, oh my God, you know, my heart has been hurting. Yeah. I cut myself over the weekend. What yeah. happens with us is that sometimes people say, you know, I've had this idea to write a book or yeah. you know, I've had this idea. And so this would put an opportunity together. Yes, it would be a creative environment. Yes, and note always when we talk about publishing, when you hit publish on your blog, when you hit publish on your post, you are publishing. And so if you start to see yourself that way, it will get you further along the trajectory of, yes, I can write a book. Yes, I can. It's surprising how many people don't see that that is a wonderful thing to do. And there's nothing like it. It's a living legacy for you. You know, it not only is it a living legacy, it also adds to our so-called 
value as a potential employee yes. or even as a potential employer or business owner yes. because yes. we are authors and there's yes. something said about not not necessarily me but some of the authors that are in our circle well you know i've got to give myself some more credit um <laughs> i'm in that circle too but you know one of the things that we were talking about is this level of engagement yeah bringing people together and connecting is one thing because it starts to synergize and you start to realize wait if that person can do it i can do it too right right and that's it that's very important and what I usually say to people, because some people will come up and say, well, I can do better than that. And I say, if you look at that energy, it's it's a competitive energy and it could kind of bite you in the butt if you, right. you go with that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so rather I can do just as well. And that's where I start with the authors. You know, yes, you can. And you don't have to go it alone because writing doesn't have to be a solitary process in the, you know, as, as those, the saying goes, right. The, the dirty first draft <laughs> after that, you can bring in lots of friends, you can bring in lots of support and, and there's nothing like writing something and then having somebody reading it. We're talking about engagement now connecting and resonating with what you wrote through stories, through your your advice, very, very powerful. And when you bring it back to the company, that's where I would like to introduce the concept of, drum roll please, <laughs> the corporate indie. Yes. That's gonna be a book I, well, I actually am working on it now. I'm gonna take a, whatever time it takes with this book because it's so important companies don't realize the power of their employees to become their brand representatives and that's where we are now in a very very unique place and the corporate indie is somebody who might be out there speaking independently but on but part of the company you know if their face is out there and you can see them on linkedin and you can see they work for a company they're representing your company. And if you allow them to be a corporate indie, you can do very well. Yeah. And that's to me the future. And I'll talk more about it whenever because it's so important for companies to realize that I just read an article yesterday in Psychology Today, posted on LinkedIn, people started offering their, their insights and it said, hey, it's, you know, it's time now, it's gone you know, Tom Peters from Brand You, the reference was more corporate, but now it's a blend. You can be you and the company gets to be the company, of course, but there's a engagement there too. There's a promise, there's a there's value that's offered. Speaking of value, I want to touch on that, Melissa, because one of the things that was brought to my attention is as an individual working for a company, have you decided or figured out if your personal values align with the company that you're either working for or that you're creating? And let me just put this on it. And what I mean by that is sometimes individuals, one, if they're operating out of scarcity model or fear or a sense of like, oh, my God, I need a job. In, in that case, they're probably not checking their personal values against the job that they're applying for. If they're an individual that's really got a great idea, they want to reach for that wealth before they check in with their worth and their values. Are your values aligning with that company that you want to then create? The reason why I bring this up. It's because when tasked with that, when I was set, I was offered, hey, how about if you consider what are your personal values and then match that up with the values of the organization or company that you work for. And what I found is that there wasn't a lot of alignment. And what I say that is that is in everything. I started checking against my relationships and checking against what? My business ideas. 
and making those subtle shifts because it doesn't mean that, okay, so you work for a company, you started mm -hmm. a company and you realize that hmm, this isn't actually personally what I value, what I believe in. There's an opportunity to look for your values or to check against whether or not maybe you thought you had a particular value, but you're not living by it. These are all things to sort of look at, right? And here's why, because when we are in alignment, that's what leads us to prosperity. Yes. When we are joyful and happy, that's when money will follow, right? right. And so if you were unconscious mm -hmm. of your values, if you're unconscious and not aware of your alignments or misalignments, you could be misguided. And it doesn't mean there's anything wrong. It's just good to check it so that you can get back on track. What do you think about that? I'm, I'm in, in total agreement with it. I mean, for me, it was at least 15 years of going in with the net worlding process. And step one is figure out your top four values. And through taking a thousand people through with the a Chicagoland chamber, I partnered with them. It was, it was very clear to me over the years that people aren't taking the time to do that. And yet we went from mission vision into values and the value equation and, and the value proposition, which companies offer. That's where you can figure, if you can figure it out and start, even if you're looking for a job, look at their page on um, values and, and go through the exercise and you can get the free book that, that we have called the great exchange that's on the ticker below and above now <laughs> so copy that down if you have any questions you can always reach me at melissa at networlding.com and i'm happy to send you the link to this free fillable guidebook this is my give back time this is not in any way shape or form about selling anything it's about giving back to the community because my focus is on being a publisher, publishing make a difference books, but the networking process holds that values piece. It's the first step. It, I, I used it over at Motorola University, uh, Office Depot, American Express, you name it. I was, I was out there, American National, MBD, First Chicago. It was so much fun to see people figure out their top four values and that's an exercise in there and then see how it aligns with your organization. And when you do, what your organization holds then is the corporate indie. And I say indie again, because if your people are doing anything outside of the organization, such as wonderful things like like mentoring others or working for a not-for-profit or volunteering their time or even speaking uh, with, on panel. Yeah, anything, anything where there are values there. And, and a lot of people don't realize it, but even on LinkedIn, and I won't mention the company's name, they were very, very clever. I was working with them and they wanted to reach uh, people who were CIOs and who loved baseball and we found a number of people on linkedin because linkedin is a social environment also yes. and they were invited to a free um to a free rooftop opportunity to see the cubs and they ended up closing deals that way because social is where the engagement happens and then you get the connection into business. And when you're able to blend those two well, it works well. And LinkedIn, as I always say, LinkedIn is that boardroom. So it's a wonderful opportunity, but it can become like Facebook, the barbecue, if you make it social. So let's 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 let everybody know what you're talking about. So yeah. um, LinkedIn is the boardroom. <laughs> Facebook is the barbecue. And yes. Instagram. Yeah. Twitter's the water cooler. Uh, Instagram is the um, is I call it the art gallery because there's so many pictures on it. And TikTok yeah. is the performance stage. Nice. Yeah. TikTok is the performance stage. 
IG is the art gallery. Yes. Facebook is the barbecue. Right. And LinkedIn is the boardroom. And, and this Twitter is the water cooler. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I really, and Twitter is the water cooler. One thing yes, that I want right. to say is the water cooler. Yes. yes. That I, that I really appreciate in all of that is that we have these platforms to communicate. Yeah. And Melissa, you bring up such a good point. I'm thinking of one person in particular who works for a major brand company, corporation that has multiple brands under it, yeah. but she is a dynamic, I'm not going to use the word diva, a dynamic person who yeah. travels around, speaks on panels. I was at one over the weekend on wellness, on health yeah. and wellness, right? Yeah. That right. Is great opportunity. Mm -hmm. Great opportunity and a great asset to the company. Right. One of the things that I want to encourage along with this in corporate indie idea is that when we are authors, um, there is a value as an individual that you have to that company because you have a following, you have a network of individuals who read or purchase your books. And to use the word, I don't want to, there's another word for authority. Let's, we got to come up with another word. Maybe. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a great, a great point to come up with another word than authority because yeah, I don't, I'm not into um, that word. But what I'm saying yeah. is that you have a voice out there right. that can be right. valued in a, in another right. level of a type of team member within yeah. that company, yeah. and so it is um, really something that yeah. I. Think Yes, a third party endorsement. It's this power of third party endorsement when it's not the company, it's not the CEO saying it, but it's the people who work in the company. Like uh -huh. they say, a leader is somebody who has followers. It's about that. It's yeah. not about the leader pounding his or her own, you know, what chest program, whatever. Yeah. Right. So with that, um, ooh, fun metaphors. Thank you, LinkedIn user. Uh, <laughs> we'd love to know your name, but that's fine too. But, you know, but this is really important because we're talking about these briefly. And we're mentioning these social media platforms. Right. And beyond just having a platform, you might have a book. And you can call that a platform in itself because it is engaging people, whether they are reviewing you on um, you know, Amazon. We love our reviews. Thank you, everyone who's reviewed 33 Ways Not to Screw Up Creative Entrepreneurship. But but these are they become assets to us, which yeah. add value to our personal brand, if you will, and yeah. further to the company that we uh, decide to either create or work for. And this is something that's interesting. I'm having this aha moment right now because <laughs> I never think about that when I am applying for a role. And right now, having been a social entrepreneur, creative entrepreneur, mm -hmm. I'm considering possible corporate opportunities. And that authorship, it's on my resume. But I think, who knows, maybe there's a narrative or something that needs to be intersected. So individuals know, oh, okay, well, um, not to say go and purchase my book to purchase it, but understand who you are hiring. Who are you bringing into your team? You can read it because I very much a part of who I am is written in my 33 ways. Um, so one of the other things that we really want to encourage is, um, as we stated earlier, you know, checking in with your values. And that could be anything in your life and how it um, impacts the choices that you make. And it might not even be job or company related. It might be relationship related, right? You may be attracted to someone. You're like, oh, mm, mm. there's a certain <laughs> level of value and prosperity that comes from feeling loved. Yeah. And then you meet yeah. that person and you're like, wait a minute, our values don't quite align. So what we're talking about literally can be impactful in every aspect of your life. That's true. And and it's like to ask the question, you'd be surprised by asking somebody, what's your top value? They may not have an answer, but then they may. And that can really lead to a great conversation. Yeah. So my top value, I am a goody two shoes and I can't help it. It's making a difference. If I can't make a difference, I feel like you know, a dog that was shooed away. Go away. We don't want you here. And I'm like, please let me make a difference. <laughs> it's crazy. But, yeah. but 
what what is your top value? What's My top your- value is I like to create things that don't exist or so it's it's creativity. It's it's absolutely creativity. But yes. someone asked me the other day, what do you do? And I said, hmm, interesting. I create what doesn't exist. And that means that it could be repurposing something that exists yes. but doesn't exist in its current form. Yes. And because of marketing and how I like to create and make things happen and move differently, even yes. with companies, yes. right? Yes. Um, I like to create what doesn't exist. And yes. that is just, you know, I say a while for you. Yeah. 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 I say that creativity fuels the soul. Yes. And I believe that. It's what fuels me and gets me going every day. Like each day is a different day. It yes. doesn't exist before. So yes. what are you going to do to make it great? Not, oh, have a great day. Don't leave it to chance. Make yes. it great. Because every yes. step of the way, you get to yes. decide and you get to choose. And today we're talking about matching up those choices with your personal values. And sometimes you learn. You may think that you had a strong, you know, value of like integrity is huge for me. Yeah, that and those are that's why we do four. Because when you get the blend, yeah. yeah, integrity was number one and then and then it shifted to making a difference. And that's why the exercise is so fun because it will help you pull out the four. Nice. And then creativity is one of them. And then collaboration, which Harvard Business Review this year came out with a statistic like upwards of 82% of all companies. That's the dominant thing that they should have is be able to collaborate. Absolutely. And I realized that so there's so few and far between to find somebody who matches up with that collaborative energy, creativity. So it sounds like we have a lot of that's, similar that's values. Why, that's why we get that's why we get along so well. But I do. I want to. I want to speak to that collaboration part because yeah. that's one of the reasons why I didn't like the word authority. Because yeah, when you okay. work, you know, when you work in a lateral, not top down or bottom yes. up, yes. when you work this way, it is more collaborative. And yes. what's beautiful about that is it really it sort of amplifies divorce diversity and diverse voices. And what I mean by that is it allows everybody at the table the opportunity to contribute, yes, to speak and to share. And that's when you get the best mix of everything. It's like a red blend, right? I like a good, you know, Shiraz and a a good Cabernet, but I also love a blend. For some reason, it just it's like they just really go well together. Then that's a really good point. And here's a tip for companies or anybody who wants to have a lot of fun with a group of people. Don't don't have them sharing verbally first. Have everybody write down, like ask a question and write it down, you know, tear off a little piece of paper with it on there, put it into a bowl so no one knows whose is whose and then put all the ideas up on some kind of flip chart because then truly everyone has a voice and it opens up creativity. I've done that a number of times, works a lot better. Can I tell you, so when I was, uh, can I tell you something? Yeah, sure. (laughs) (laughs) When I, when I was um, speaking for the ULI urban land Institute back Mm -hmm. in October, um, it was, it was a high honor. Not only was I one of the speakers on, um, entertainment development, but Ernie Wong, one of my favorite people in the world, happened to be the speaker ahead of me. And so um, it was quite a joy and a pleasure. But one of the things that they did um, for that workshop is I stayed for the workshop and they had all of the entertainment developers. And when I say entertainment developers, I'm in a room with individuals who build stadiums around the world, right? Wow. There were 34 people in the room and $50 billion was represented just around wow. around that. There was only two women developers, me and another woman. And then there were other um, uh, there were other women there that were either attorneys, project managers, things like that. So we still see a huge gap, huge gap um, mm-hmm. in that environment. But the point is, is that they broke us up into teams and we each were given the same 
development. It was like you had X amount of square feet, maybe five buildings, a park in the center. How would you design it? And it was so much fun. So wow. Architects in the room. We got to design. People were drafting. They, you know, I was coming up with the narrative for community engagement, and oh, yeah. it was incredible. And then it was competitive, right? And then yeah. so we each had to present at the end. And that, what that did was it brought everybody together. We're talking about these are major developers who are competitive mm -hmm. in their work mm -hmm. as developers, right? Who got you know, who's going to get the bid for the new stadium over at such and such? Who's going to get the arena? These are individuals who come at times um, wow. pitted against one of another in bidding. And it was beautiful. We had fun. It was engaging. You know me. I had everybody breathing and relaxing and getting <laughs> in the room before I started my presentation. But to your point, Melissa, yes, it's always a great opportunity when companies or even as small business owners allow for their employees to come together. You know, I make sure that. that they're paid, get some good food in there, um, and really have these kind of fun conversations. And yeah. it could be anything from, what did you eat when you grew up? That's a fun conversation I always like to start. That's a, a good one. What did you eat when you grew up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Gary. That's who's yeah. the metaphor. Jerry, it's Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> I don't have my glasses on. Hold on a second. <laughs> Jerry Perrin. Yes. And and so I'm I'm still wondering what you ate, but I'll tell you what I ate. Um, oh, you want, let me answer yeah. that. Yeah. One thing uh, that can oh, I tell you? Yeah. One thing that when I was doing my final recording, so I've, I've done my first audio book. Don't let anybody tell you it's easy. It's not. Don't even. Don't even. Anyways, I'm really excited about it. But I was sharing with my um, my sound engineer that when we were little, we used to eat. This is so unhealthy. But we used to eat sugar on toast. Oh wow! Butter toast with sugar on top. But he's like he's Filipina, and he was like, oh my god, da 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 da, and it's like. You know, you have different cultures that now, mind you, yes. that is not a cultural thing. That was just, we were silly little girls. Yeah. But I will say that um, we did, um, oxtails is something that I grew up eating and oh. I love and found out that it has Caribbean roots, right? Oh, like wow. those kinds of conversations pull back oh. some uh, of the layers of who we are and who our ancestors and our friends are. So Melissa, what did you eat? Oh, well, I didn't eat very much. Um, I would always hide things behind the curtain <laughs> in, our, in our kitchen. But, okay. uh, but I did love my grandmother made onion sandwiches. And, and that has more, you know, German roots in it and so forth. But uh, yeah, with lots of butter. So if you're, we're going to go for sugar, <laughs> I'm going to go for butter. Like, like, yes, like Julia Childs, that, that's, that's a great question. Anything that opens up connection is yes. what we're talking about in value. And since we're also talking about publishing, the, and you talk about the word narrative. I like that a lot. What came to me when you were sharing that story is, gosh, you got to write that one down, Saudia, because I had no idea in Chicago how many beautiful parks there are. And I'm discovering them. And you can even look up on Google, like all the parks and go visit them. I mean, small parks, medium sized parks. You'll be surprised by the number of parks in the city and and out in the surrounding suburbs <laughs> oh there are so many beautiful outside spaces and especially while it's warm enough what's he say i did an egg and still can't you you mean eat eggs this is manga <laughs> i'm like you did an egg that's extra that you're adding to us, but <laughs> to the conversation, but I'm not sure what we it's like. like. It. We like it when everyone has something to say. And I yeah. encourage and He's got to come on. Manga has to come on because he is someone that communicated with me years ago from Africa, then oh. transitioned to Washington, D.C. He's oh. built a vibrant business. And oh, just my heart is so filled with joy by the work he's done 
And he, he has created a book recently about what a book that you can read to your child even before it's born about oh. all the promise of the promise of your life and oh it's so beautiful yeah ganga is ganga the person that i talked to that yes, is it's ganga it's pronounced it's, it's spelled g-e-n-g-a -G -G -A, but it's ganga yeah pretty sure Benga and i had a conversation pre-pandemic about yes it i think you did yes. oh this is awesome. He says, yes. Oh my gosh, Benga, it's so good to see you. And I'm so glad you were checking us out today. And Melissa, I love this book that you're saying he's written. I know. I, I don't know. Ask him what the name of it is because I thought that was a really good idea. Benga, yeah. have you written your book yet? And if so, or let us know where you are because we would love to be able to shine a light and, and share it with everyone. I mean, that's what <laughs> Excuse me. That's what's so important about why Melissa and I have decided to come live every other Tuesday. Speaking of which, yeah, I'm not going to be here next week. I'm not going to be here not next Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. I'm having major surgery, and um, I'm going to be incapacitated and not yeah. able to, you know, not really do much for a good six to eight weeks. So for those of you who are like, where did Sonia go? Yeah. I will be healing. So yeah. I just ask for all of your healing vibes. But Bang Up, definitely let us know the title of the book. We would love to be able to share it. Um, and yes, we did connect. Let's connect again and let's bring you on. And I love this idea, okay. Melissa, of doing the lunch and learn. I mean, for the yeah. next. Yeah, we're going to do the, a lunch and learn where people can write in. And maybe Banga wants to fly in from... Um, from DC, but that was so much fun. And I'm sure we can figure out, you know, how to make that happen. There okay, it is. So put my glasses on. Future it's awesome. leader, seven prophetic declarations for shaping your child's identity. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? Nice? It is wonderful. Well, we'll have to, you know, like give some copies away of that and make that happen in the future when Banga comes on. So that would be fun. Well, it's a yeah. great Tuesday so far, and I really have enjoyed speaking with you, my friend. You know how we do. Uh <laughs> how we do, yes, how we do it. It's yes. how we do. And, 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 and I wanted to just rifle off just three projects you've worked on, just so people get the idea of the depth and the breadth of that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your wellness wish. Okay, go for it, Melissa. Okay, so for example, for me, one of the, the most fun things was working with Jocelyn when she was the CMO of Office Depot. And we had a thousand women in the room, including our Secretary of Labor, Katie Keurig, Jerry Laborn from Oxygen. That was a blast. Then there was being at Motorola talking about um, six degrees of Carolyn Kennedy. And that was incredible. I loved working with the people from Motorola and we had so much fun with that. And it, that's when they had about 80,000 people and everyone was connecting. Mm -hmm. And I stood for two and a half hours signing books and enjoyed that so much seeing people connect together and figuring out how to break down the silos at that time at Motorola when they realized they could partner with each other and collaborate. <laughs> and then the third one was at Fortune Brands when Sally Helgeson, who wrote the, fem wrote the Female Advantage and Thriving 24-7, I was on a panel, she led it, and I got to talk about the great exchange. And there were two young women from fortune brands, women leaders that ran up to me afterwards and said, Melissa, we're going to create a transformational opportunity for the company this year. So companies, how could it get any better than that? And that's what yeah. networking is about. Yes, your turn. Oh, okay. Well, um, gosh, I'll speak most recently um, about, um, I, I mentioned speaking for you, um, the Urban Land Institute as an entertainment developer for the Entertainment Development Council was a huge honor. And that this was this 2020, 2021, uh, fall of 2021. And Damon John, um, the consummate entrepreneur, uh, was the finale 
he was the finale um, speaker, and I was able to have a, a meeting briefly and give him one of the 33 ways not to screw up creative entrepreneurship books. So that was really exciting. Um, like I said earlier, having that opportunity to work with leaders in the industry of, mm -hmm. you know, developing spaces for narratives and stories to be told, whether that's movie theaters, fun sports to happen, arenas, all sorts of things, concerts, right? All the things that I love. I fell in love with creating the space for all of the creatives to play. Um, so that was very exciting. Um, I also, um, in 2020, was a part of the Tech Rise, which is P33, Penny Pritzker's foundation. Cool. Tech Rise is an organization that created what well, um, opportunities to connect um, diverse BIPOC small business owners in tech to venture capital. And so to be on their first um, sort of uh, conversation, in conversation with Penny Pritzker and Sharice Conan Johnson was really exciting um, because it just sort of brought together these incredible individuals and to launch, that's the word, to launch this really exciting um, opportunity to provide dollars, real dollars to black and brown tech innovators. And then to then be hired by Verizon and P33 to then produce the finale event, which was at the auditorium event or auditorium theater here in Chicago wow. and to you know, choose the catering and make sure that our cameras and all the positioning and all of the, the, yeah. this is really powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, I'm going to share something that's really powerful and to protect the, um, wow. innovators who were competing for a hundred thousand dollars at that time, wow. that competition was only rivaled by MIT giving a hundred thousand dollars away to a minority i don't like to call that let's call it underbanked um Underbank. entrepreneur. and yeah, i, like I would say this as an advocate for stages unions being more diverse and mm -hmm. all spaces where you have union hands stage hands i'm an advocate for diversity um there were no stage hands that were of color of any kind and here's where there's a bias and we watched it happen. <clears throat> we had a stage hand yelling from the rafters every time someone stepped on stage. Well, sure, the audience needs to hear you. We need to hear. That's fine. He was just, you know, giving people a little information, call it that. But by the time it got to this one individual, Dr. Christine, she comes on, he yells at her and says, hey, it's not how you walk out, you know, it's really people need to hear you. And it was, it was very demeaning to her. Mm -hmm. And, and her whole body language went like this. Mm -hmm. And I said, hold on. I said, excuse me, hold on a second. I walked over to the stage to her. Mm -hmm. I put her mic down and I said, listen, ignore what he just said. It has nothing to do with him. I'll deal with that. I need you to be you. Just mm -hmm. be who you are. Mm -hmm. This is about you. And I don't need, I said, no, what did I say? This is about you. So you can walk out here however you want, but what we do need to hear is your voice. The audience needs to hear your voice and the judges need to hear your voice and your business. And guess what? She after that, the world. <laughs> after that, I went and I told the individual that manages the stage hands, I need no one to speak to these contestants. They're under a lot of pressure, allow us. P33, Verizon, my production team, we are the only people that should talk to any of these people here. Number two, just so you know, I talk to the people. I let my clients know, okay? Because I understand that these individuals were under a lot of pressure. And guess what? what? She won. She won oh, the $100,000. Wow. Okay? Wow. wow. So great. those are my three examples. That's but incredible. That's a great about, story. Well, I get really passionate about, yeah. you know, when we talk about diversity, inclusion, and equity, mm -hmm. and access, mm -hmm. individuals forget that if there's no one there in the room to represent or to protect that individual that is the only one, then there's not, there's no way. Nobody else would have heard. She felt it. Her body language sat back. I felt it, and I heard it, that mm -hmm. he was being disrespectful to her, and he wasn't to other people. Mm. 
those are the reasons why it's so important to have a diverse mix. All parties are at the table and everybody is respected. And that's engagement and that's checking in with values. So companies, we've gone 10 minutes over, but I had to share that story because it's so important, right? Yeah. And yeah. As you can see, I get so passionate and excited about, you know, one, being able to see individuals grow and thrive, doing what they love. Doing what they love. And 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 I'll I'll also add what's so incredible about that is a human connecting with another human and and giving that human uh a, a, you know a runway where they can they can just soar that that's such a wonderful gift and to be of service again you know making a difference that was a wow story and should again be published so from <laughs> prosperity you know prosperity comes from connecting to your values, amplifying them. And we live in this creative time. I call it the second renaissance. Some people might say, oh no, it's the third or fourth. I I might have missed others, but this is definitely a renaissance and a creator time. So it's it's this has been amazing, an amazing conversation. And we will miss seeing you, Saudia. I'm not going to be on by myself, but what but I'm looking forward to our next conversation very much. Looking forward to you, my friend, seeing you, talking to you, and sharing with our individuals who check in with us every now and then their stories, some of their books that we'd be happy to spotlight, provided they're in alignment with um, people doing good around the world. And um, we'll inspire everybody to make it a great day. Yes. Make it always a great day and create, enjoy. Create, 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 because that's what fuels the soul.